of time. Oh, man. God is good. All the time. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, welcome to this time of worship as we celebrate Christ on this gorgeous Sunday morning. I uh, wanted to welcome all the visitors here. This is a special Sunday. Besides worshiping God, which is the greatest, we, we are celebrating infant baptism as well. So uh, what a joy it is, and what a joy it is to have family here and friends here. Uh, welcome all. There are many things going on in the life of the church, so please note everything in the, in the, in the bulletin, just some that I want to uh, make you aware of. There is a youth group uh, gathering here next Sunday at 6 o'clock, so if you have youth, that's a good time to come. And if they have friends, they're welcome as well. Also, the Chords group, the young adult uh, group, will be meeting between services next Sunday. We are receiving new members on June 3rd. If you're interested in becoming a member of Field United Methodist Church, see me after worship. We are meeting between services next Sunday as a, as a new member gathering. Uh, food Sundays next week, Community Care in North Ridgeville is out of food. And so please bring your non-perishable food items here to the church uh, so we can, we can uh, fill their, their shelves. Uh, reminder that there is a Joplin Mission Team meeting tonight at 7.30. Also, we have, our, we have our rummage sale, and that's going to be next week. Having said that, all those dishes that everybody's left since Christmas Eve, if you don't pick them up today, we'll make money on them in the rummage sale. So just wanted to remind, remind you of that. I think that's all I have. Let us worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. note written to a friend of mine by Oral Roberts and what he said uh, was that this is how he feels toward the sick and lost and it's been that way all his life. It's a poem called The Shepherd. Where are you going my shepherd to find my sheep? How far will you go as far as my sheep? How far may that be to the world's end? How long will you seek it until I find it? When you find it will it come to you no, it'll fly from me. Where will it go then? To the rocks and to the sand. When will it stop? When it can run no more. What will you do then? Carry it home. That's you and me and Jesus. And we're done running. He's right there waiting to carry us home. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for a chance to worship you, to hear your word, to sing your word. We pray, Lord, that you'll help us to try it on for size, walk in it, and wear it for the rest of our lives, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Why don't you all stand up? We're going to do a little singing together. Some of you might not be used to standing when we sing. You sit right back down when your legs tell you to. No problem. Okay? All right. <laughs> Lord, 
delight thyself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Even though sometimes we stumble, even though sometimes we fall, call him up and tell him what you want. good all the time say hi to someone someone not next to you take a couple steps and say hi to someone this purpose. Here we go. Well, I hit it in rehearsal. We'll see if I can do it. Victorious, hallelujah, victorious over sickness, he has triumphed, hallelujah, he 
16. John teaches us of love. He says, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. So hear the word of the Lord. Jesus, you are 
Help it to be in everything that we do, that you would receive the praise and the adoration and the glory for all. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 One of the great privileges of the church is to celebrate the sacraments. And the two sacraments of our church are is, is Holy Communion, which we will celebrate next week, and this morning a great sacrament of baptism where Christ calls us to go forth and baptize in his name. And this morning we are privileged to baptize Elizabeth Ann Radloff into Christ's holy church, into this holy body. So Radloff, come on up. I have just a few questions to ask you. And she is sleeping sound. Boy, she can sleep through that first tune. That's pretty good. That's what we practice. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Will you nurture Elizabeth Ann in Christ's holy church? that by your teaching and example, that she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly and lead a Christian life. And if you haven't done so, please take out this yellow tape. Now, I have a few questions for you. This is the body. Do you as Christ, the body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in, Christ, in Christian faith and life and include Elizabeth Ann now before you in your care? We will. I don't know whether you're aware of this or not. Even before Elizabeth Ann was born, this church prayed for her, prayed for you. And when she was born, the prayers continued, and they will continue. Now let's all join together as a body, um, affirming our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth. 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ? By the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray together. The Lord be with you. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water, and she who receives it to wash away her sin and clothe her in righteousness throughout her life, that dying and being raised with Christ, she may share in his final glory. Elizabeth Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit live within you, the being born by water and spirit that you may grow and thrive as a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now it is our joy to welcome our new sister in Christ through the baptism as incorporated by the Holy Spirit in, this, in the God's holy church. You're made to share in Christ's final victory and you're now part of the holy body of Christ. And you know who the holy body of Christ is? It's all these people out here. Oh, they're your parents and your family. But this is your church family. This is your Christian family. And see all these people when you wake up? They're going to help you. They're going to help you grow in faith. We're going to teach you all the wonderful things of God and all the wonderful things of Scripture. We are going to help you along in your journey all the time from this point on. For these are all your friends. These are all your family. That's a pretty neat thing, isn't it? Boy, you're going right to sleep. <laughs> That's an awful quiet baby, guys. <laughs> Happens all the time, huh? Let us welcome our newest member of the body of Christ.
amazing joy, isn't it, to welcome another into the body of Christ. That is our calling, and that's the joy, and we'll celebrate that this morning, and every morning, by the way. There are many joys that surround us, the joy of mission in Christ's name. Just look at the Bolton and all the stuff going on. That's great. That's what we're called to do. You look outside, and, and the sun is shining, the birds are singing, it's a little on the cold side, but who cares, because Christ is alive and in us, and that is a joy to be sure. There are many joys, more joys that surround us, but there are also many concerns that weigh upon our thoughts and, and deep within our souls. So if you would please note those on the prayer list and have a couple more I'd like to uh, add to that. If you would please pray for Evelyn Smith, who will be having uh, continued chemotherapy this week. Also for John Stansfield, who will be having a procedure on Tuesday. Um, for Betty Gregovich, who will be having hip replacement on Wednesday. And for Sasha Gregovich, who is, who is ill in Arizona. I think that's about it. Are there other joys or concerns of the church? Oh, Ruth Lauber, uh, uh, Dick's mom, please pray for her and for Dick and his sister as they venture out to Illinois to be with her and, and, and make uh, difficult decisions in her health care. hospital uh, with pneumonia and other complications. Please. Prayers for Paula Briggs. Are there others? Pastor, I have one. Um, on the way to recovery for my dad um, from brain surgery uh, a week and a half ago, he was off of his blood thinners for a couple weeks. Um, so now he has a blood clot. They found a blood clot in his leg. Mm. So uh, continue prayers for him. Continue prayers for Jerry. Anyone else? Let us then go to God in silent prayer. Gracious God, author of our salvation through our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, we come here this morning to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us, all that you continue to do for us. Lord God, we are amazed at your love for us. We know we don't deserve it, but you give it anyhow. We fall down and scuff up our knees and you lift us up and bind our wounds and set us free to continue to do your work. Lord God, we, we can't thank you enough for the calling that you've placed upon our lives. We give you thanks, Lord, for family and friends, the privilege of celebrating baptism this morning. We pray for Elizabeth's family, and we pray for her and continue to pray for her as she grows in faith and in spirit. Lord God, we 
We pray for those who aren't here this day, those who are hospitalized and those who are recovering from surgery and those who are having surgery and other procedures in the upcoming week, Lord God, we, we just pray your healing presence upon all of them. Lord God, we, we do pray for our world. We pray for our great nation and our leaders, our communities and our community leaders. Lord, we also pray for those who are anxious in their faith, who are frustrated in their faith, who seek a closer relationship with you but have yet to hear the word. Lord God, put those words in our mouths that we may reach out to them. Lord God, we pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Especially this morning, we pray for the family and friends of Betty Vensel. Lord, by your Holy Spirit, turn their grief into joy with the certainty of everlasting life for the one they have lost. Lord, we lift up to you Paula and Orlando and Nathaniel, for Andrew and Gavin and Jan and for John, for Lisa, for Paula, for Judy, for Jerry, for Ken, for Maggie, for Ruth, for Sasha, for Evelyn, for John, and special prayers for Jerry too, Lord. We also pray for those who are part of our armed services and their families. We pray for Sean and David and Natalia, for Catherine and Jeremy and Robert, for Kyle and John and Matt and Joshua, for Paul and Scott and Jerry and Kyle, Lord God, there are so many we lifted up to you this day, and we know we've forgotten many, but you know them, Lord. We just pray your healing presence upon them. Rain down your Holy Spirit to heal their bodies, to nourish their faith, Lord. And Lord, empower us to do your work. These things we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who through his disciples taught us to pray boldly together, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to ask the children to come forward for a children's sermon. I'm ready. Come on down. If you were going to give a party, and if you wanted people to come, what would you have to do? Give balloons. What's that? Get balloons. Get balloons, yeah. Give them an invitation. Give them an invitation. Boy, you're reading my mind. That right, KJ? Give them an invitation. Give them a call. We can do all kinds of things. We can, we can give them an invitation. This is an invitation to a party. Now, you all will be invited to this, but that's not for a couple of months yet. But this is an invitation. And it tells you where the party is and when it is and who it's for and everything. And we can do that. We can, we can invite people on Facebook too, can't we? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And yeah, we need balloons too at a party. Uh, we, uh, we can invite on, uh, on the telephone and the mail, all that stuff. All that stuff's really important. Well, this morning, Jesus is calling us to, to make an invitation too. In the scripture that's, that's going to be read, Jesus is called the shepherd, and a shepherd is somebody who, who brings all kinds of sheep together and everything, keep them in place. But he also says that he has to go out and bring other people in too. Well, the only way to bring people in the church is to ask them, huh? The only way to in, uh, bring people to church is to invite them in, to give them an invitation. And, and so God's inviting us uh, to invite others. Because that's, that's a great gift, because God gave us a gift of this church and, and all these people and, 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 and faith and all that kind of stuff, and God just wants everybody to, to know that. And so when you think about a party that you're going to have and you have to invite people to the party, think about the church, too, because we also have to invite people to church. And that's a good thing. This is kind of one big party, too, really. We do a lot of singing. We could do a lot of dancing. I was told I'm not supposed to dance up there. But any, that's because I have no rhythm, by the way. <laughs> you, 
You all can dance if you want, but I can't. Uh, but anyhow, invite people to come to church and invite people to, to come to the events and all that stuff, and, and you're going to give them a great gift if you do that. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for inviting us. Thank you for asking us to church, and, and we just hope that we can ask other people to church too so they can enjoy this with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for coming down here this morning. Let us pray. Lord God, open our hearts and minds by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, that as the scripture is read and your words proclaim that we may be filled with hope, renewal, and the revival of our souls. Now, Lord, may your word come through me or in spite of me. Thank you for another opportunity to try to get it right this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to read from St. John's Gospel, the 10th chapter. I'm going to start in the 10th verse. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I came that they may have life and have it in abundance. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that, I, that do not belong to the fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the power to lay it down and have the power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. What a comfort it is to hear that we have a great shepherd. And for those of us who grew up in the burbs, a shepherd takes care of sheep. Make sure the sheep stays all in one place, and if a sheep wanders off, the shepherd goes and brings it back. It guides them. It makes sure they're safe. If they fall into a hole and break a leg, they'll bind that wound. That's what a shepherd does. And so this morning, this great text says that, that Jesus is our great shepherd, the one that, that guides us through the, uh, by the still waters and through the green pastures of life, those, those good times, those great times. And it's a wonderful feeling to know that Jesus is with us and will sustain us all the time. As the old hymn attests, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. How nice it is to have faith in this great shepherd to guide us through life. Why, we're a house set upon a hill. And to some, this house is a way to escape the world, even for an hour or two a week. And you know, we could be okay in this house set upon a hill. Why, in the words of Pink Floyd, we could be comfortably known. We could be content as sheep. I could say that I'm saved. Saved from what I'm not quite sure of, but I could say I'm, I'm saved. It's a good thing. And there's truth in all these statements. That Jesus comforts us in our afflictions, saves us from ourselves, gives us hope, gives us renewal. The great shepherd leads us and guides us and sets us free. But 
You notice there's always a but in the sermon? But the church and ultimately our faith is not about how we feel. The church and ultimately our faith is not about us. It's not about me. It's kind of nice to think that way, but it's not true. Because there is more to it than what the great shepherd offers to us. Oh, he offers us life. And life in abundance, as the scripture says. Abundance like we never could fathom. And that is joy, to be sure. But there is more, and here's what the more is. And I tried to get ourselves out of this thing. I checked the original Greek in this text. I checked all the, all the different types of, of, uh, of references and, and all kinds of Bible translations, and I came up with the same word, a word that kind of stuck with me all week long. Jesus said, I have other sheep that do not belong to this church or to the fold. I must bring them in also. Not we should, or it's a good idea, but we must bring them in also. When I saw the word must, it jumped off the page. You ever read something that just certain words just jump off the page? Well, this week, it was that word must. There is an imperative here. That Jesus says all must come into the one fold. All must have one shepherd. So we say, wait a minute, you mean to tell me, Jesus, that your church is open to non-members? Your church is actually open to people who don't think like us, who don't speak like us, who don't look like us, who don't pray like us? You mean to tell me, Jesus, they're welcome here too? How can that be? What if we don't like other people? You don't really want us to go out, do you? Why our membership has its privileges. Like having an American Express card. One of those platinum cards. The same with the church, isn't it? Why, if we're members of this church, we have privileges and we can decide who comes in and who comes out. Why do we have to, Jesus, upset our little community set upon a hill? You're our shepherd, so you lead us. Isn't our little flock good enough for you? But you're saying you must bring in all the other folk. Do we really, in other words, have to love our neighbor. All of them? Do we have to love all our neighbors? Do we have to love that guy over there, that lady over there? Do we really have to do that? Do we really have to eat? eat? I can't say the word. Hard to say the word. Why, well, I'd have to get a wig, and I'd have to learn how to say Jesus with five syllables, in order to do that E word. I can't do it, and I won't do it. Oh no, Lord, I'm satisfied with that first part of the reading. Boy, I'm satisfied with the, with the life in abundance. That's fun, isn't it? Having life in abundance is great. Having, having the Lord uh, with us all the time, that's a wonderful thing. And to be led. Because it's certainly easier to be led than to lead, isn't it? So I'm awfully glad that we're being led. No, I'm satisfied with all that. I get that. I get the Jesus thing. Because it's all about Jesus. That's what we are singing about Jesus. If I like bumper stickers, which I do not on my car, I would put a bumper sticker that says Jesus on my car. I'd have a bobblehead. 
on my dashboard. They might like bobbleheads on my dashboard. I'm all for you, Jesus. I know that's what it's all about. And we're open. If people wanted to come, they would. We got the old entry set Sunday morning at 7.30. The door's unlocked right at 7.30 like clockwork. The atomic clock, isn't it, Michael, that's set on that? That door will open. People can come in. There's no reason for us to go further than that, is there? Evangelism is one of the dirtiest words in church. We like to kind of avoid that word. Because in our minds, our faith is a very private thing. It's a personal thing. It's a community thing. But they will go beyond our community, outside those walls. Why? We don't want to upset anybody. We don't like evangelism perhaps because by our tacit inaction. Richard Stearns wrote a great book. It's called The Hole in the Gospel. And he says evangelism seems for many to be about saving as many souls from hell as possible for the next life. It minimizes the concern for those in this life. The imperative nature of the good news, of our baptism. I don't know whether you knew it or not. Elizabeth Ann was baptized, but all of you reaffirmed your baptism. And in, your, in our baptism promise to God, we promise to reach out to the least and the lost. We, re, we promise to reach out and proclaim the good news. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. But today. We promise to reach out to the people now. And I think that's what challenges people. For the gospel doesn't concern itself with the future. It's about the present. It's about offering hope to the people today. So Jesus says, I must bring them also now, today. Can't be horsing around with something in the future. Because we're about the present. We're about the now. We promise to serve God now. That's our baptism. Something that drives me crazy when I go out and I hear that the youth and children are the future of the church. I think that's crazy. You know why? Because I think the youth and the children are the present of the church. They are the now of the church. They are the ones that will facilitate the growth in the church now. We adults are not the future of the church. We're also not the past of the church. We are the now of the church. And we're called to proclaim the good news now. Just as the youth and the children of this church are pro promised to proclaim the word now. Now is important. Because now is where we find ourselves. We complain maybe that we may not look the same as we did in the past. We may not do the things the way we did in the past. We might complain about all that kind of stuff. But the past is the past. It's history. And we live today. And we're called to evangelize. And I'm not afraid to use that term anymore. Today. We're called to proclaim the good news today. Why? Because people need hope today. They don't need it in the future, and they don't need it in the past, because we can't confer hope on the past anyhow. We confer hope on the today, on the now. So we must share the good news today. 
by whatever means necessary. If it means sitting with someone who is downcast, who is sick, then that's what we do. If it means we sing praise songs, then we sing praise songs. If it means we sing old hymns, then we sing old hymns. But we need to do it now. Today. You know, we all need to be loved and feel the love of the great shepherd. And I hope we all do. We like those warm and fuzzies, and I certainly don't want to discount that at all. But I think others need that as well. It's easier to seek to save someone for heaven or for eternal life than it is to witness the saving grace of Jesus Christ so they may find Christ themselves. It's easier to seek him out than the witness. So I keep hearing the words of Jesus that he must bring them in. Maybe God loves us so much that he wants us to have the joy of offering others the same joy. It's not a future event. So maybe the question should be not the old evangelistic phrase, are you saved? But going back to our Methodist roots, when John Wesley, when he met with his preachers and with his classes, the first question he asked was, how is it with your soul? You know, let's not worry about whether you're saved or not yet. Let's see, how is it with your soul? In other words, how are you feeling? I want to know because I care about you. How often do we go out and ask someone, how is it with your soul? Some may not say much. And others may well say a lot. When we ask that type of question, we are offering Christ today. We are living our baptism today. And that is not for heaven sometime in the future. That is for eternal life today that we can enjoy today. Jesus came for the whole community, just not a small group. He came for all. Not just those with whom we agree, just not those that look like us and all the rest. Jesus came for us all. Our general church motto is open hearts, open minds, and open doors. That's what we're talking about at General Conference this week, and I forgot to lift up our General Conference of the United Methodist Church that's meeting, well, now for another week or so. Pray for the controlling body of the Methodist Church. Pray for, for strength and pray for wisdom and pray for healing where healing may be necessary. What our church says are we have open hearts, open doors, and open minds. That's great. We've got to make sure they're open. We must offer hope, especially to the world around us. We are not here to judge. We are not here to condemn or speculate. That's about as far away from living a Christian life as one can get. All we're here to do is offer hope and affirmation of the presence of the Great Shepherd. Sometimes that's tough. It's easier to worry about someone's future than to get involved 
in someone's presence. Yet that is what we are called to do. As Robert Frost wrote, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference to me. When we take the road less traveled by, we become blessed beyond measure as we reach out to those that our Lord Jesus says we must bring in. You know, saints, God has given us a gift that must be shared, not tomorrow, but today. And that hope is needed more and more. As the evangelist John wrote in 1 John, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and in action. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for the grand calling you've placed upon our lives. We give you thanks for calling us to reach out to the least and the lost and the marginalized. Those who don't look like us, or talk like us, or think like us, but you love them as well as you love us. Bless us this day, and as we offer our gifts to you, may you bless them beyond measure, so that we may reach out to make one flock, one fold, for one Lord and Savior. Bless the gifts we now lay before you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <laughs> Must have been the Lord. Pretty good. <laughs> well, let's stand and close out with the. Uh, Good one. <laughs> it is a good one. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king.
Father, as we go out today, we ask that you'd help us to walk in your victory, walk in your love, walk in your power. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Bye. Have a great week.